The Solar Meter 6.5 is a device which can be used to obtain a numerical value for the intensity of UVB at any given location. This value is given in units of the UV index. In common practice, a UV index of 0 to 2 is associated with minimal sunlight or shade, of 3 to 4 with low sunlight, 5 to 6 with moderate sunlight, 7 to 9 with high sunlight, and anything above this with very intense sunlight indeed. Clearly this is a useful metric to obtain, as with a knowledge with the UV index in hand, we can make a quantitative attempt at replicating the UVB intensities that any given species of herb would choose to expose itself to in the wild. This is important because of the significant metabolic interactions UVB is known to have with herbs, namely causing the synthesis of vitamin D3. The Solar Meter 6.5 has three principal parts, the button, the screen and the sensor. To activate the sensor, press and hold the button. An instantaneous reading of the UV index will appear on the screen. Your solar meter may come with a protective jacket, in which case it's important that this jacket be removed when taking readings, or at least the top flipped over, as it will block UV from the sensor, and therefore you will always get a reading of zero with the top velcro down. Note that the solar meter 6.5 comes in several flavours. The orange and yellow version like I've got, one with a Chinese water dragon on the front, one sold by Zoomed with their logo on it, and one with a blue label. These are all just the same device dressed up differently. When measuring the UV index inside a vivarium, hold the solar meter 6.5 from the end opposite the sensor to prevent your hand blocking any UVB reaching the sensor. With the button held down, move the device slowly around and try tilting it at different angles to see if this alters the reading obtained. Remember that reptiles and amphibians won't be floating around in the air, so taking any random reading in the middle of nowhere is not going to be informative. Your reptile will not be accessing this part of the UVB gradient. Instead, try your best to position the device such that the sensor is in a position your herb could reach. Often this is difficult because the height of the device means that the sensor is held significantly above where your herb will be positioned. Because the UV index drops off as you move away from a lamp, this means that the figure obtained in such a setting will necessarily be higher than your herb would experience. Remember, therefore, that so long as the sensor is an equal distance from the UV lamp as your herb would be, the reading is informative of what your herb would experience. So, for example, when my line day geckos bask on the top of this branch, the UV intensity they're exposed to is going to be the same as what is currently displayed on the solar meter. When doing all of this, it's important not to look directly into any UV emitting lamps, as this has the potential to be damaging to your eyes. If you're at all worried, just put on a pair of sunglasses whilst you're taking readings. In order to find out what UV indices we should be offering to our reptiles and amphibians, we need to take readings outside so we know what they would be experiencing in nature. Whilst this has already been done in many global locations, the more data we have, the better. And of course, it's enlightening just to go outside with the Solar Meter 6.5 and take a few measurements to see for yourself how UV indices vary with your location and the weather. To this end, we've produced a chart for recording this information and submitting it to a database. There will be four data collection events in total, the specific dates for which will be published in advance of each collection event on the Reptile Lighting Facebook group, the Advancing Herpetological Husbandry Facebook group and my YouTube channel. Each event will last for a few days or a week. Only data collected within an event period will be accepted. It won't be essential to take recordings every day through an open period if you don't have time, so just choose the date most convenient to yourself. The chart has a number of columns as follows. Time of reading. This is the time, to the nearest half an hour, that you took a set of recordings. You don't need to take enough recordings to fill in the entire table. Some data is better than nothing, so even if you only get a chance to fill in a single row of the chart, Please still submit this. UVI max in the open. This is the maximum possible UV index you can record while stood up away from any objects which might obstruct UVB reaching the sensor. 
When taking this reading, hold the solometer 6.5 at arm's length. With the device held from the bottom and the button held down, move it slowly around, tilting the device until you find the maximum value. Record this value. UVI 4 inches above the ground. This is the maximum reading you can obtain with the base of the solometer 6.5 touching the ground out in the open. This reading is useful as it will be more indicative of the UV index a hip would experience close to the floor. Again, tilt the device about until you find the maximum reading. If you can, lie flat on the ground facing the sun such that your shadow falls away from the solometer 6.5, although obviously do not look directly into the sun. UVI in shade. Move the solometer 6.5 into an obvious patch of shade, and using the same principles as before, find the maximum possible reading. This reading is more for your own interest than anything else, so don't worry too much about the specifics. If it's cloudy, it might be difficult to decipher where the shade is, but just try your best. Surface temp in the open. This is the reading taken using an infrared temperature gun pointed at some object which has been left out in the open. When taking this measurement, ensure that the gun is at right angles to the object that it is reading the temperature of, and that it is within a few inches of this target object. You can choose any object for taking this reading, although ideally choose a natural object like a piece of bark or a stone, and if possible, let us know what this object was when submitting your data. Surface temp in the shade. For this, take a surface temperature reading of an object which has been left in the shade using the same techniques as for finding the surface temperature in the open. Weather. The final column is to provide an indication of what the weather was doing when you took a recording. Write S to indicate full sunlight, H to indicate a light haze or thin cloud, or C to indicate full cloud cover. We don't expect you to take recordings in really nasty weather, so don't worry about recording any other weather than this. Once you've put all your collected data into the table, please fill in the boxes at the top of the page with your initials, geographical location and the date on which you've filled in the chart. Email the document to us at worlduvdatabase at uvguide.co.uk so that we can process the data. Please note that this email address is explicitly for the submission of data, so if you email any questions, queries or other propositions to this address, they will be ignored. If you wish to collect data on multiple dates in the collection period, please send us the recordings for each date in separate documents. We hope that this will prove to be a fun exercise and that the data obtained may be useful to us all in years to come. If you want to take recordings outside of a data collection event, then feel free to do so, but please remember that we will not accept this data if you submit it to us, as sorting through that amount of data all year long will be a full-time job. Once we've sorted through the data from each of the four collection events, I'll make a follow-up video discussing the results. Today I've talked about how to use a Solometer 6.5 and I've introduced you to our UV Index data collection project. However, I've not spoken much about why or how you should be offering UVB to your herbs and what UV indices you should be aiming for. These things I've spoken about in other videos and will leave you to go and watch them because for today I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example and I'm going to see all of you in the next video. Bye guys!